Thank you, everyone. Um, I'd like to take a minute to thank everyone who's come to tonight's event. Uh, welcome to the World Heartbeat live, uh, live stream tonight. And uh, to some of the people that are already here, Dasha, Chris, Sarah, Veronica, and ooh, 66 more. Wow. We thank you so much for coming out. Um, a little bit of housekeeping. We would love it if your cameras are on and your mics are off, just so that uh, the sound doesn't conflict with the live streaming event tonight. And, uh, you know, have fun and enjoy. Good evening to you. Um, we're so excited to be holding our first live streamed event and um, bringing you the vibe of um, World Heartbeat and the Academy. 
And um, also to thank you for all your support during this COVID time. It's been so intense. And um, without your support, we wouldn't have been able to be where we are. So um, we'd like to just talk a little bit about um, the experience of what we've done during COVID and also introduce you to our work and some other of our students and a few interviews as well. So um, as um, when COVID happened, we managed to adapt um, pretty quickly, I mean, very, very quickly, and just take everybody online and support people online. And we um, also gave extra support by the older people, giving extra mentorship um, lessons and sessions um, with um, the younger ones, with um, providing equipment, um, computers with our online partners where we needed to. And um, we had some social sessions and we worked on a video with um, all together and, and we managed to teach for hours and hours between us. And we also managed to support a team of over 40 freelance musicians. And as everybody knows, it's been a really difficult time for musicians and the arts. And um, then since that, when we've opened, we've, um, we were given um, a gift from Jack Petchy to do something fun with because um, they wanted to thank us for all the work that we've been doing with our young people over the summer holidays and keeping everything alive. And so we invested in some AV equipment. So we have, um, tonight we're bringing you a show with three cameras and... Um, and as you see, the um, action is all being shot by three young, young people. Um, the person that's got the camera in front of me is a 13-year-old. And then camera two, um, Ella, is operating it. And camera three, Sam's operating it. They're both 16. And um, we also like to thank Milo and Ayo, who's in the studio with the sound. We've got cables and cameras and lights absolutely everywhere. And, um, and also Nick, who's um, like become head of production and, and we're all trying to keep up with him as far as um, how much we've got planned um, online. So thank you, Nick. As we've expanded so much, and as everybody knows, we're developing um, a second academy to support these youngsters even more and give them um, more places, a, a, a new place to train and we've got the architect in town that's going to talk about that and then somebody from our development team and we've got a lot of nice surprises for you so sit back and enjoy and um, here is Natalie thank you Natalie <laughs>
Today we're playing Leave a Slide by Christ Love. Hey guys, it's lovely to see you all. We're going to be performing I Got Sunshine by Avery Sunshine. Feel free to get, get up and dance, um, and we hope you enjoy. One, two, three, four. To make ten dollars 
lockdown and all the exams were cancelled it was very stressful and I was very upset especially because of the exams as well as well there was a pandemic and lots of people were dying and you know you didn't really know it's quite unsure of what was going on I think with the lockdown a lot of uh, people have been experiencing depression because um, lost a lot of structure in their life and not being able to see um, anyone um, I think a lot of people struggled with with World Heartbeat, um, the music lessons carried on, which was really nice um, because it gave kind of some structure to the day, especially because I didn't have any school going on. So it was the one point where I could do stuff. I could practice my instruments. I could still have lessons and do a lot of um, more activity than a lot of other people because we could do it online, which was really nice. World Heartbeat also did some social sessions where we could just chat and it was really nice because we could a lot of the time we couldn't see anyone, so it's really nice just to talk to a lot of people um, after not being able to see them for a long time. Um, music has helped me a lot with um, just something different from school and stress and just something that I can do for fun. I can always do, there's never anything that is stopping me from being able to do music. Um, I really like to help people in the community and um, being a part of World Heartbeat Music Academy has really let me see that in people and see that like how nice and kind people can be and how helpful it is for other people in the community. COVID-19 was really horrible because I couldn't go to my school and I couldn't come to the World Heartbeat Music Academy. I had to look after my siblings a lot. I've got four of them. 
which was really annoying. Um, and I was doing lots of homework. My dad has to sleep in this sitting room. Um, and then joined onto the sitting room, I've got three, there's one room, which Leland, Sharon and Mackenzie sleep in. Me and my sister have to share one room upstairs. My cousin ha has a, his own bedroom and my nan and granddad has a bedroom. Every time I went upstairs to practice, I either had Caitlin coming up there, um, annoying me, or I had to go back downstairs and look after my siblings. Um, when World Heartbeat was open again, I was really happy because I could finally go out of the house and do music. I couldn't be on my own in my house because I always had someone coming up to me and screaming in my ear. My mum didn't come down to help us because she's because she keeps working. Like she has two jobs, one at night and one at, during the day. I last saw my mum in July last year and I have to look after four of my siblings all younger than me. When I'm older I want to be a maths teacher or a musician. Well I play the guitar and I sing in a band and on vocals on Mondays with Sean. And what I like about World Heartbeat is that I can come here and play music all I want and the world heartbeat always feels like home when I come here, here. The only people that I saw during lockdown was my family. I did not see no teachers. Thank you very much for joining us this evening. Um, I would like to introduce Rory Aikenhead. Um, if you could just um, give him a wave, Rory. Hello. <laughs> there you go. Evening. Uh, Rory joined the team at the height of lockdown in around the end of March, April time, when our previous architects looked like they might not survive COVID, and thus handed a baton over to us and said, you know, there's about five days' work to go. I'm delighted to say, <laughs> I'm delighted to say that actually that's ended up being six months. And not because Rory has worked so hard for so little, but because World Heartbeat has gained so much awesome components in the original design and allowed us to explore a kind of post-COVID situation with incredible technology integration and implementation. So World Heartbeat has obviously gained in that process. And I'm sure Rory is going to talk all about that um, in just a minute. But I'm thrilled to say that we are days away from um, putting a tender together. So that's really exciting from, from our point of view. Um, the journey has been really incredible to date. And it seems um, only yesterday the World Heartbeat welcomed half a dozen people into the academy. And, and now we're up to nearly 400. So we, we've kind of something's going right. And um, we have thousands who do attend workshops and master classes, which uh, World Heartbeat uh, also put on. And as Sahana said, um, during the last six months has been really brutal for all the artists or nearly all the artists around. And I'm thrilled to say the artistic director has gone on overdrive over the last few months and ensured that all the young people have had more engagement than ever. And as a result, we've managed to keep the 40 plus um, professional musicians who teach here are, are at work, which is, is a great testament to World Heartbeat and the ethos behind our organization. But what I want to say is not about the huge impact uh, that we have on young people's lives. And when I say impact, I'm talking about life transforming opportunities uh, where an average student might stay for six or seven years and where we support a whopping 50% of those students. I'm here to talk, and I've been told to talk about a little bit about the new building, why it's so important uh, for World Heartbeat. Because it's really exciting and it's an amazing opportunity. And although many of our students do end up in conservatoires, there's many, many who just don't fit that mold. And this, they're, they're incredibly talented. And this new building is going to be able to facilitate that and be able to offer them uh, the kind of technology that will align them really closely to the creative industries. And, and that's all good for, for getting young people into work and, and helping uh, that journey. So World Heartbeat at Embassy Gardens, uh, will be an extension of World Heartbeat at Kimber Road, which is where we're at the moment. And it's going to provide, continue to provide 
high quality training, but uh, also will have a high quality uh, functioning facility as well. And at this place, we'll be able to provide uh, more mentorships, more meaningful apprenticeships, learning digital, including through camera operating that you, you're seeing for the first time uh, ever um, right now, programming, producing, editing, broadcasting, list goes on, recording, lighting, composition, and of course, performance opportunities. Um, oh, I forgot, and teaching too. So it'll be a place um, of awesomeness. It'll be a place where so much can be done and is, is really exciting for World Heartbeat. It's also going to be a place where students cut their first albums, and a lot of our students are so excited about that because it's, it's a very difficult step to go into a professional recording studios and be able to do that, that process, or very expensive. Um, so just like Apple, um, with a conscious, we, we aim to continue to develop the World Heartbeat ecosystem and we will be doubling our capacity. We'll have tenfold uh, in reach within probably three years, which is where we're hoping to be. And I hope the work we've already done has made it easier to think about investing in World Heartbeat. And, and when you invest in World Heartbeat, you really invest in the future of young people, uh, where opportun opportunities are really shrinking, uh, especially at alarming rates within the uh, creative industries. Um, thank you very, very much. And I'm gonna pass you on to Rory. Uh, who will talk a little bit about the building. Good evening, everyone. James, thanks for the kind introduction. Um, when James and Sahana approached me, the brief was to create a beautifully crafted music venue, recording studio, broadcast space, and multiple teaching rooms. Um, the, the, the best asset of the World Heartbeat organization is the students themselves, as you've heard this evening and nurturing them and giving them a building is something that both James and Sahana are hugely passionate about. The current academy acts as a home from home for many of the students here. And it was important that we continued that feeling and family connection with the new building. World Heartbeat's greatest asset is its students. And this building embedded with technology will allow them to evolve into some of the greatest pioneers in the music industry without question. Um, the investment in this building asset will have untold benefits, not just for these students, but also for the wider music industry and the creative sector as a, uh, as a whole. As James has already mentioned, recording, um, broadcasting, creative arts as, in general. London already has a foothold as this is one of the creative city, most creative cities in the world. And these students represent the next generation. So it's an extremely exciting project to be involved in. On image one that you'll be seeing at the moment, which is of the ground floor, you'll see the auditorium space in the center upper. This is fully acoustically isolated with a box in box construction, uh, separating it from the residential apartments above. To the left, you'll see the recording studios. These are also fully isolated. On image two, which is of the mezzanine, you'll be able to see the teaching rooms these are also fully isolated and a gantry level that overlooks the main auditorium. Image three is of the auditorium itself. This auditorium is quite unique. It's highly flexible space with a dynamic audio system that will allow for multiple music performance types, ranging in size of orchestra and music offer and also the ability to have different seating configurations within the room, increasing and decreasing capacity, making this venue very unique. Image four shows the foyer and cafe. This space will hopefully be a creative and inspiring place for the public and the World Heartbeat community to spend some time and act as a communal hub for the building. Thank you for the time this evening. Um, I hope you enjoyed the music so far. I'm going to you play into uh, Jaden, who's a talented drummer you've heard play already this evening, and he's going to talk about the implications of lockdown on his life and the part World Heartbeat plays within it. During lockdown, I was very, you know, confused about everything that was going on. Um, I would say sad as well because I feel like I didn't get to leave my school um, you know, 
how everybody else has done in the past you know it was very abrupt as a younger child I was you know pretty I wouldn't say badly behaved but um distracted a lot um and it was just about finding the perfect school to me a school for me and as a result of that I've been to about six schools three primary schools and three secondary schools um I first came here when I was about seven um and I'll never forget, I actually originally came here for a jazz piano lesson with Trevor Watkiss. Um, and as soon as I finished with that jazz piano lesson, I saw the drum kit out here um, in the in the main room and I started playing it and my journey just, you know, started from there really. During lockdown, I formed a band called uh, Wavy Collective. We had, um, you know, meetings on Instagram, actually, and on Zoom, rehearsals on Zoom. I was in my feelings a lot during lockdown, so um, I started writing um, a lot of R&B, a lot of R&B stuff um, during lockdown. World Heartbeat was a place where I can escape and solely focus on my music and becoming a better musician and a better person. World Heartbeat taught me about values, you know, you know hard work, um, consistent dedication, and um, if it wasn't for Heartbeat, Lord knows what I'd be doing right now. You know, it's just an, it's an amazing, amazing environment. Um, I know for a fact that with the access to equipment that we have at this facility, it would cost thousands and thousands of pounds. Like a lot of venues will look at me and stereotype me for the way I look um, and therefore automatically make a decision in their head to not let me use their facility if it wasn't for the academy, um, Wavy Collective wouldn't be as successful as it is. Yeah, me, I'm personally ecstatic. I cannot wait to move into the new heartbeat. Um, I've been excited for this and been waiting for this moment for a very long time. I know that for the facilities are going to be amazing. Um, can't wait to start, you know, working on a potential album and working on um, really starting to, to shed in that new place. So just excited for it. My name's Kane Moore and I am Interim Head of Philanthropy and Partnerships at World Heartbeat. I'm delighted that Sal, for whom I'm serving as maternity cover, has been able to join us this evening with her daughter Millie. Hello Millie and hello Sal. On behalf of everyone at World Heartbeat, thank you so much for joining us tonight for this evening's concert and for your support over the past seven months. It means so much to us. Over the course of the evening, you've heard how, since lockdown in March, we have continued to inspire young people through music and to give these talented young musicians something to strive for during an incredibly uncertain time. Like any great jazz musician, we have improvised, taking our tuition online, broadcasting and live streaming concerts like tonight, training up our music leader students as mentors, getting instruments and equipment to our students, to their homes, and launching a new strand of professional development support centered on digital production and performance. And we have dra rapidly drawn on the learning from the past seven months in the plans for our new academy with facilities that represent the future of music education and which blend live and digital. If you've been inspired by tonight's event, all that we ask is that you follow the link posted into the chat by Phoebe. Phoebe's gonna do that now, and which I'll share over email after, to a very short form, which will take less than two minutes to complete. Through this, you can choose how you'd like to continue your journey with World Heartbeat, and how we can take forward your support. From booking in a hard hat visit to our new academy, or once COVID restrictions have eased, of course, and making introductions to friends and contacts that share our values, to signing up to our, new, our name a ski, seat scheme, sorry, or naming a space in our new building. Thank you. It's been a pleasure working with the students here at the World Heartbeat Academy. We're gonna give you two songs this evening. The first one comes from Botswana and it's called Mangwanim Bulele.
Our next song is a song that comes from Zimbabwe and it's a song called Haiwa. Haiwa means no. I'm James Joseph, and I'm a trustee here at World Heartbeat Music Academy. Um, we'd like to thank you for being with us this evening, and um, hope you enjoyed yourselves. You've heard about our journey, and about our new building, and, um, and about our vision and aspirations uh, for World Heartbeat going forward. Uh, we've always been ambitious about, well, about this organization, and you've also heard how you can help us realize those ambitions. A huge um, thank you to all of our talented musicians. They played some great music and uh, from a wide range of palettes. Uh, thank you to all of the team for delivering this live stream. It's been very difficult, but it's also been quite smooth. When the world is, is restricting our movements and restricting what we do, um, we at Heartbeat, we we see that as a chance to challenge the rules without breaking the rules, of course. Um, but now I'd like to close this, this, this uh, evening 
with two talented musicians, Miss Karen Shiraishi on the piano, uh, Mr. Orlando Gilbert on the tenor saxophone, and they'll be playing a great standard by Cole Porter, I Love You. I'm James Joseph, and we are World Heartbeat Music Academy. Thank you. <laughs>